Okay, so I don't know how much you know about the draw already, but actually this is how we are uh, defining ourselves. So we are <coughs> an arts education charity and we champion drawing in its widest definition. So we're talking about it in terms of um, visual literacy. So if we could move on to the next slide. So th th this demonstrates, I hope, the range of the work <coughs> that we're doing. Um, so the, overall, what we're basically doing is we are working to raise awareness around the role of visual literacy. We, of course, run the Big Draw Festival and the um, annual awards that go with that. We <coughs> advocate for the importance and the value of art education and creative learning. We obviously run the John Ross Rusby Prize exhibition. We work in partnership to hold uh, various different programmes and events throughout the year. And we're looking to raise profile of drawing in its broadest sense. We hold an annual national symposium and some other events. We run various special um, project, uh, projects and, and pilots in schools, in libraries, that sort of thing. And we, of course, uh, produce regular mailings, share information, newsletters, blogs, uh, digital content, etc., etc. So, what do we actually mean by drawing? Um, as I say, we are approaching it in a very broad way. <coughs> I'm so sorry about this topic. Um, and we're seeing it as a, a tool, as an underpinning skill across a broad range of creative industries. And you can see the breadth on the right hand side um, of where we see it having a role. So, it's not just your traditional, if you like, at one of the traditional end of things, which of course it is, but it, it, there's a whole there's a whole spectrum, so right through coding, graphic design, animation, film, so on and so forth. <coughs> to the next one. So if I could just give you a moment just to take that in. Give me a chance to cough. Because I think it really does give a sense of the complexity and the breadth of what we actually do, which you might not all know about. the reference. So the campaign for drawing, you may all know it as a campaign for drawing. Now you can see it at the top that we're not calling ourselves a campaign for drawing anymore, we're now just calling ourselves a big draw. And that's because really the branding was becoming quite confusing <coughs> across the two different brands. So it, it, it's, we've done away with it. It's not to say that the ideals are not there, but the campaigning is now very much a core strand of our work. So what I suspect is that Probably, most of you just know about the festival. So officially, so the, the festival officially takes place in October. So we've just finished that officially. So you can see on the top the Big Draw Festival, and there's two boxes that go with that. Now the festival is our only um, international strand of work, and that does take place around the world. All the other programs are just national. So we do we play very active role in campaigning. We were also, we run a big conference each year. We work closely with our range of patrons and ambassadors. We have some very high profile patrons that we work with. We create lots of, of content. We, and, and all these themes, the steam thing that we've had for this year is cutting across each, each year. So each year we have a, <coughs> a different theme. So, and of course, on that program, you can see that the John Ruskin is, of course, one of our very important key projects. So we go to the next slide. So there you go. Um, it's actually near a four million. It's a kind of outdated those stats, but um, they don't include the last couple of years. But yeah, 16 years, high profile events. Of course, the whole thing started off by the end. We have around 400. It's actually about 420 thousand participants in the Big Draw Festival each year. And last year, the festival had. A presence in 26 countries is near 30 this year. So we're just doing stats for that at the moment. This is this is our theme for the year. So that has cut across all our programmes for the year, and that theme will end March 2017, and we'll be announcing our new theme for the year. We'll go to the next slide. So again, I wanted to give a sense of the breadth, because again, I suspect that people just think that we engage with schools and museums and art galleries, we don't. I think if you just, again, take a minute to look at that. 
you can see um, just how broad it is. So everybody, we have a whole range of civic organisations, tourist attractions, guild societies, leisure centres. Um, the wings are wonderful. We've even had, um, we've even had a it's just a, a very strange. We get all sorts of, of, of organisations and, and what we sign up. So the biggest chunks are the education sector, which is about 30%. That's from preschoolers up to um, university level. And then, of course, museums, art galleries um, is the second biggest chunk. There are very significant groupings in, in all the categories. <coughs> so the reason I just wanted to talk a bit about the STEAM theme that we've had for you, which I think it is very relevant um, to John Austin. And I'll feed into that and see how it works. So this was our theme for the year. That was how I was describing it very much. So for those of you that don't know the STEM subjects, science, technology, engineering and maths, of course we are part of a national lobbying group that is saying we need to put the A into that because of course we have the arts in it. Now some people have used STEAMED to identify as educate and design. It doesn't really matter, but the whole point being there's not enough, there's not parity at the moment between um, arts, arts, design and uh, STEM subjects. So we can go to the next slide. So I absolutely believe in that. I don't, I think that arts, crafts, it's been artificially siloed over the years, of course, it's never the case. Ruskin, Leonardo didn't wake up and say, oh, today I'm an artist, tomorrow I'm an engineer. Of course, it's not, it's a much more fluid way of working. So science is creative, um, engineering is creative. So I think this word creative, we need to. I think the art of temporary society needs to be assessed. So we can go to the next slide. <coughs> so why this particular theme? And this is where I start to think we start to dovetail with Ruskin, and I'll feed into, into Ruskin. So as I say, something new. This silent has uh, been going on for a while, and we need to pull that apart again. This idea of the polymaths, I think it's more relevant than ever in our contemporary and digital and visual culture. People are working internationally. You might have somebody, you might, you might be a startup, three people, one's in Africa, one's in London, one's in Jamaica. They're all working um, together, but differently, and they're all doing, they're all the multi-role, they're designers, they're artists, they're manufacturing, all of these things are happening together. So I think we start to move very much, uh, see the synergies there with, with Ruskin. I think it's the right approach, and this is probably why Ruskin was so spot on, because it, it, it is about equipping people, and we need to start equipping our young people for the skills that they need <coughs> for the future. Uh, and you consider that I have a five and six year old, when they're 20 or looking for a job, 80% of those jobs don't exist. They haven't been made up yet, they don't exist, but they will be, they'll be visual, they'll probably be virtual, but they'll certainly be, um, so they'll be virtual to show we need to be equipping, that's this idea of visual literacy, so we'll start to move into visual literacy idea, which again, I think is very closely um, linked with many of Ruskin's <coughs> idea of hand to eye and the rest of it. So in terms of it breaks down barriers, helps people learn, and we've talked a bit about is it STEM, is it STEM, there's all sorts of silly debate about that which doesn't matter here. So if we move to the next slide, just to give you a sense of the, the size of the events that we do, we also did a big um, symposium again last month, we were in November, no, September, and <coughs> we looked at the role of visual literacy, and by visual literacy, um, which I, I'll define shortly, my personal view of visual literacy, everyone has their own ideas, but I'm talking about it very much as a language, um, how visual, and that visual literacy is as important as your traditional literacy, that they dovetail together, but very many people, visual literacy is their first language. And so we brought a whole range of um, innovators and scientists, um, and arts, arts organisations, but we were looking particularly to bring scientists and engineers to come in and talk about what they think creativity and how drawing underpins their uh, professional practice. If we go to the next slide, I'll get it works. <laughs> so this is something that we did um, with the Royal Society <coughs> last month. And um, it, it was a very, very popular activity with the young people because of course it's drawing, but it, it's, it's drawing using um, bacteria. And you let it, and then it's amazing because it had the kids transfixed. They're looking at new ways to engage and bring arts and science and design together. But this is how this is my, this is what I think absolutely, and I, and I believe in this wholeheartedly that it's an overthinking and that we all need to be 
Um, it needs to be going higher up in the lexicon in our <coughs> language and culture. So if we move on to the, the next bit. So just before, before we move on to, I'll show you some of the slides from <coughs> the prize this year. But those are some of the key stats from the one we've just done. So we're hoping to maybe go for about 900 as our target this year in terms of engagement with artists. So 30 artists from around the UK, 52 artworks were shown. Um, we did hold two exhibitions, I'm sure you've all seen in the press about the new art gallery rules, so I do hope that isn't going to close. Um, nearly 23,000 people came, despite having quite a, a tricky venue in London to do it, um, on the second. And the catalogues, the catalogues were uh, produced at a very high level and they, uh, we sold them and they were very popular. And I think I've got a slide in, just to give you a little um, hint. And we did, we did sell about a third of the artist's work. Not just um, about the exhibition, and it, you know, there's a whole process. Uh, if we can go to the next slide as well. So, this was uh, the first prize. So, it went to Laura, <coughs> Laura Oldfield Ford. She deals with partic particularly gritty issues, marginalisation, um, particularly around the East London area and the Docklands. And, um, so, we can move to the second. Jessie Brennan, she came second. You probably, you might have heard of the, um, the Robin Hood. Yes, go to the next one, and then Robin. Um, that was the student prize, actually. In addition to the exhibition and the prize, <coughs> we also ran a series of complimentary events around the theme. That just included a couple of them, and there was lots of them. But just to give you um, a bit of a gist. Um, this was a talk, so we were really looking to engage with, with um, people from the local states, from this area of the Docklands, because it's, a, it's undergoing huge, massive change. And if we go to the next one. And this is actually where we're based, our office is based in this amazing place called Trinity Blue Wolf. Um, only lighthouse in London, that red light ship's actually a recording studio. It's quite a quirky place to be based, but, but, but very good for us. But we did, um, we worked with the line. So we, the line is a sculpture trail, very architectural, um, and lent itself absolutely to sketching. So we did a, did a sketch crawl as part of the whole programme, so there's lots of other events. So moving forward, looking at what we're going to do next. Um, so Clive has already touched on it. And I've kind of threaded out a, a few quotes for us that we can also link it to, but my favourite one is absolutely this one. And I, I know Tappy can saw it. Yes. Yes. Someone else has picked it too. Yes. It's just amazing. <coughs> so it goes back and it's feeding back in with everything else that we're doing. So it's keeping that momentum going. So the steam activity that we've had. As Clive said earlier, we, we are hoping the Victoria is absolutely looking for lots of other ways that it might be able to embed and work with the Guild as well, you know, with the, with the John Ruskin Prize, but also you can see that there's so many other things that we do as well, um, and there may be other ways that we could, we could link and work together, um, and there may be people in this room as well that see opportunities there, and if you do, then please just come and tell them we're very open to, to ideas. So those are the lovely folks that Clive pulled out for you, maybe. <coughs> So that's it really, so all I would say was just to reiterate, please do come and talk to me if you've got any ideas. <coughs> um, we're very passionate about this visual literacy thing, it's really at the top of our agenda, and if you can see a way that you can partner with us on any of our programs, just... So thank you for time, I'm so sorry about this. Thank you.